So let's talk about SKN's toning function. Now, the toning function is really interesting because it's super powerful and it utilizes a layer stack arrangement that we really haven't seen before, allowing us a very powerful HSB replacement of color, which really gives us more than just, you know, hue and saturation or color balance or, you know, selective color. It gives us more control in a very literal way, as well as some different shaping that we can do in terms of light shaping and things like that. But before we talk about the tone settings, it's very important to talk about when we run tone and what's important to know about the SKN workflow. Well, for one thing, first of all, the tone function can be run at any time. You can use it without editing your image first, you know, in terms of skin cleanup. You can use it after the SKN cleanup. You can use it after a manual cleanup, whether you use dodging and burning and healing and your own frequency separation setups. However, you want to edit the skin for cleanup reasons. You can run tone after that. You can use another plugin for cleanup and then run tone. Tone is powerful no matter what. This tone section is, again, the second part of the SKN kind of double shot panel. It's so powerful that it can be used pretty much on any workflow. Now, what's good is that it's integrated into the SKN workflow. For example, here I have cleanup already run. It's just the default settings off and on extremely basic cleanup very lightly done okay but i always mention we should look at our mask right so if we look at our mask okay we think to ourselves is it okay are there things i want to change there might be so let's say i want to mask out the lips and while i'm here on the shot oops i'm going to go ahead zoom in sorry about photoshop lagging there for a second we'll just double check that this mask is okay gonna quickly eyeball the mask on the face. Yeah, they mess up the this little area a little bit. Okay, I did some other modifications as well. I'm going to go ahead and mask out the eyes. There we go. Just because of the eye makeup there, I didn't want it to get modified with a hue balancer of cleanup, which we have videos on that. Okay, so let's say I modified my mask and I clean it up and I, you know, it's 95% of the way there, but I polished it up and it looks really great. Well, when you go to tone, and hit play, it's going to run another set of processes, right? It's going to extract or rather flatten everything that you've done in cleanup and then use that to create its toning layers, which again is that HSB replacement. So when I hit play, it runs that layer stack. But here's the thing. It'll recognize if there's an SKN cleanup folder. And if there is, it'll use the mask from that folder. It will not reprocess the mask because that's kind of a waste of your time. If you've adjusted the mask even a little, you don't want SKN to start at the default mask that it finds, right? So it pulls the mask from below, allowing you to keep going in your workflow. Okay, we're going to go how we can, we're going to mention in a second how we can go backwards as well. But let's go ahead and talk about toning. So we have it here in the advanced section. We have the overall opacity is our main one. Very, very important, just like cleanup, because if you have all your other settings looking pretty good, including our grade section, you have it all looking pretty good and you think, hey, I think I like this, but it's all too much. You don't have to change every single setting a little less. You can change the opacity. OK, or if you have your opacity lower already and you like everything, but you want more of it, you can turn it up. Very, very simple to have overall opacity. Now, the desaturation is very, very important for getting specific skin tones. A lot of times when we're adding color to a skin tone, which we will in a minute, what happens is we start getting a false positive that something looks bad simply because we have too much saturation. For the most part, human skin isn't very saturated. When we're trying to get our skin tone in a good spot, ready for color grading of the overall image, we have to consider saturation. So much so that I created it on its own slider. Okay, that was very important to me that desaturation overall was a master setting. So pretty obvious, you desaturate and everything gets more desaturated. You can see, except on the areas that I've masked out, everything gets more desaturated. Pretty straightforward. Below that is another general setting. That's the hue shift. Pretty obvious. You go to the left, it gets warmer. Go to the right, it gets, well, they're both warm, but it goes from like a pink to a yellow. And even though it's pretty extreme, going to like this greenish yellow all the way to like this very obvious pink, it's still within a reasonable range of human skin tone. We mentioned that all over these videos, but regardless of nationality, regardless of the deepness or darkness or lightness of skin, in the digital space, it all exists basically between like red, pink and yellowish green, but mostly yellow and red. All of it exists in there. OK, so that is kind of limited to give you a reasonable 
way to adjust things. You never need to make her skin green, at least not with this panel. Now, below that, we have the HSB replace, okay? Highlights, midtones, and shadows, and we can change the HSB. This is not just a simple HSB adjustment using a hue and saturation layer. This is actually, if you were to open up the guts of everything, you'll see that these HSB replace layers are done pretty cool, okay? We have some masking and some cool color science-y things going on. It's pretty awesome. But what's the upshot is that you get to do a significant change, not just to a radical amount of change, but the way you change it. So for example, let's say I want to deepen her skin. Start with the midtones. Take the brightness down. You see how she gets a little darker, which is fine, okay? And as we darken her, we notice that the saturation isn't quite right. The saturation works sort of at this brightness level. But when I deepen her, it starts to look a little too red, right? This is where the overall desaturation comes in. See, I can deepen that, excuse me, deepen her skin tone, but then desaturate a little bit. I can desaturation a lot and take the saturation of the midtones up. H, S, B. This is S now. And as you can see, it's all a little bit red. It's too strong, et cetera, et cetera. So I can take the hue shift to more yellow, can make her not quite as dark, maybe a little more like that, off and on, okay? So as you can see, I've done a natural modification of the midtones, which is usually where you're gonna be when you wanna add depth or brightness to the skin. You start with the mids and then you accent and complement it with subtle changes to shadows and highlights. So let's reset everything. I'm gonna click on the midtones title and reset that. And I'm gonna reset the hue shift and the desaturation, okay? So let's say we go to shadows. If we increase the brightness there, we'll see what happens. The shadows take on the default color hue the hue angle, which is a red. Now we can make it sort of more red into pink. We can make it into yellow, etc. And we can just kind of bring that brightness down. Let's make it a little red. Bring the brightness down until we find something that we like or take the saturation of it down if we want. A little bit of toning there. Go to the midtones. Add a little color. Make it a little more on the yellow side. Deepen it. But overall desaturate. Overall desaturate. Hue shift to the right to make her a little more yellow okay and then if i like where i'm going with this but it's too strong take the overall opacity down there's a 78 percent from that to that just a slight toning now let's do reset everything okay we can also if we really want reset the hue we can really we can also go in midtones we can brighten if we want you notice how naturally it brightens doesn't get overblown out or whatever it's very very natural and we can tone maybe a little less than that a little more yellow Shift her towards yellow and desaturate a bit. Uh, let's shift her towards pink, actually. And then overall opacity down. There we go. And now we have like a, a very subtle brightening effect. Okay. Mid-tones, you can do so much because, again, we're replacing the HSB. What, is, what does that even mean, right? Well, let me give you a quick demo of that. Let me reset a few things here. Okay. All right. So if I go and boost the saturation on the mids up completely, we're not just adding a red tone on top. We're swapping out the red. We're making it whatever we want. We're making it, in this case, yellow to pink, which is again, our skin tone range, okay? And we can darken like crazy. You can really see this on highlights because a lot of times when you mess with highlights, if you try to darken them, they don't really get darker because white is white. And if you use like curves darkening or any other type of contrast-based darkening, the white will stay white. But here we're replacing. So we take the B down, we're taking the B down within a reasonable range. There's no reason to change the highlight into pure black. We could with this tool, but we don't need to. So we just made it to where you can neutralize your highlights, tone them down and just, you know, chill them out if you need to for some reason, either a little or a lot. All right. And you can even color them if you want. So there they are a little bit yellow, a little bit pink, obviously not a useful function like the way I'm doing it right now, but it gives you the idea of what's possible. Now, why? Could that potentially be interesting? Well, here's why. Let's say you like your highlights, but you're not in love with them and you want to reshape them. So you go to your highlights and you tone them down to where the image is a little bit flat now. Okay, I'm going to go to the mids as well. I'm going to deepen them just, just a bit and take the overall opacity back up and desaturation down. Okay, cool. So I've got my highlights deepened a little bit because I don't necessarily like the shaping of them. That's what the next section is for. Highlight intensity and highlight range. So you have seven default ranges, okay? And the highlight intensity is the opacity. So actually it's not the opacity, excuse me, I misspoke. This is actually the intensity based on brightening from certain parameters, okay? That again are useful. So if I intensify it, 
we get some highlight shaping. I'm gonna put it really high for a minute. Okay, as you can see, we're kind of toned down our original highlights. If I bring them back up, you see what happens. I tone them down and I replace them, if you will, with my own, if, just a different one. And I can make them a broader range, a tighter range. I'm gonna put it real bright for a second. Really tight range, tighter, broader, 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 and a full sweep. Obviously, it doesn't look right, but I can tone that down. So I can make her look a little low contrast and bright. I can make her look a little high contrast. And let's turn down the mids a little bit. And then we'll turn this up. And maybe that one. Okay, something like that. Desaturation down, overall opacity down, etc. See, just a completely different tonal shape. Now, on top of that, let's say I take saturation down a little bit more because I like the tone sort of, but I want to explore a color wash. Okay, I go to grade. Now I have some default preset gradients that I can wash over in different ways and modify contrast and luminosity. Okay, now these 25 skin tones have been selected from thousands that we looked over my own work, lots of work we found everywhere, and we found a good even set of gradients. Now, when you look at them, you shouldn't look at them as, ah, that's now the skin tone I'm gonna get. If I click on this top left one, I'm gonna get this greenish peach thing. If I click on this one, I'm gonna get these dark browns. No, this is adding a color wash of these ranges on your existing tones. So they're gonna vary infinitely. We could have had 200 presets instead of 25, and you still would have the same infinite variability between the main tone section and all the different ways you can tone here, and then these color washes. It's just another option. So let me click one. Here's a reasonably bright one. I'm gonna turn up the opacity, okay? And I can choose a soft light blending mode, which is my recommended one, or overlay the one a little stronger. I'm gonna have to turn down the opacity on that one, okay? Or you can have hue, which is more of a replacement and then color similar to that replacement, but will account for um, saturation as well, okay? Depends on what you wanna use. Those are the four main ones that I recommend people use when it comes to gradient map color wash, but this is specifically for skin toning. So if I choose a darker one, you see what happens there. I can change the opacity of that and get that vibe in there like I want, a lighter one and increase it. But overall, I can also modify below. I can increase the contrast, which is great for shaping, brighten her, darken her. You can see how that mask we made earlier is so, so important. So if I go to that sort of green tone one here, but I tone it down a bit, contrast a little brighter, come back to my main tone. Let's go to the mid range and brighten her a bit. She's a little dark. Highlights is fine, but I'm gonna increase the intensity here and the range, uh, maybe less intensity. Okay, I go back to grade and I can play with different grades. This one or this one or the darker one or this sort of gold one, another muted gold one, very pink one. Lighter one's okay, I guess. Contrast is pretty good, but it's a little strong, so we'll take down the luminosity. Okay, so I don't mind that so much. Now, here's the key. You might think, great, fantastic, we're done, we move on. Maybe I can come back to the main tone section and save a preset. And I'll call this like um, medium, medium tan tone, okay? And now I've saved that one, and that's great. I can use it later on. But here's a key thing that's very, very important. We have a video on this by itself, but I'm gonna show you right now. Let's say I look at the situation here and I say, I like my toning. I like my toning a lot, but I wish I would have done something different or cleaner. Well, not all is lost. Even though we have to flatten to go into tone, okay, because of the nature of the HSB replacement layers, which are super powerful, which is why we do them. We did create a way to kind of quote, go backwards. Here's how we do it. We turn off our tone, okay, our tone stack. We go back to our cleanup stack. Now we go to clean up here and then we make our changes. So we can, we have other presets we can use if we had them, we can go to our advanced settings here. Let's turn up a lot of texture just for no reason at all, except to show you that something has changed. Okay, so there's a ton of texture. Now we go back, okay, tone, and we go back to our tone stack. We turn it on, we see that we don't account for it. We don't have the changes from cleanup, but that's okay. While we're here on the main page, we have a reprocess button, the circle arrows. Hit that, it'll recognize that it has a, a cleanup stack and reprocess it, keeping your same tone settings, but changing your cleanup settings. The thing, it can be done infinite amount of times. Turn that off for a second. You don't even have to turn off the, the layer stack. This is just so you can see your changes. Go to cleanup, make sure you're selected on the stack. Go to advanced. Let's choose a slightly different radius and a lot less. Let's turn down the contrast and brighten her up a little bit. Yeah, I don't mind that so much. We're gonna do a little more hue balancing and a little bit towards yellow, something like that. Cool. 
Go back to skin tone stack, turn it on, tone reprocess. And there we go. So we can always go backwards when we want to change our texture, even if we're toning. Now, the reason again why we do this is because of the nature of the HSB replace. It is so powerful, but requires the pixels to be reprocessed so it can use them for luminosity ranges, kind of on some inver inverse masks or really plates. If you're familiar with the world of printing, they kind of look like plates. So we like that. So we didn't want to sacrifice it. So we have different ways for you to go to work backwards, if you will, and keep going. You can save all of this and open it up later and keep working. And all the metadata is still there so you can stay flexible. So we went from this to an edited and slightly toned image, whether I want brighter skin or darker skin, redder skin or more yellow. It's all here and available with our tone functions. Playing with this is very, very important because there's not one master way. There's no click button, it's great. You have to play around with it to get the looks that you want and see how you can manipulate it. It's basically infinite in terms of the different ways you can manipulate tones. Some functions might even seem like, um, you know, redundant. Why do we have mid-tone toning and saturations and hue shifting if I have grading? Well, it's a different way to look at your approach. You might like your overall toning, but you want a wash of pink to yellow on top of it, blend it in with soft light, which adds tonal contrast overall contrast and luminosity changes. This is an endless tool. So you can keep playing around to try to get the skin tone the way you want it. All right, now again, I have um, on my tone, I have this one saved. I'm gonna save a new one. I'm gonna call this one medium lighter. Okay, and hit save. Excellent. Now, if I go to, uh, let's just delete that layer stack. So let's say I do a, a cleanup. Nope, get it right. Let's say I do a cleanup and I'm happy and it's great. So now I go to medium lighter and I hit play, uses the mask that I created, and there it is, it's done. Okay, that was a preset from all our previous things. Turn off skin tone, I'm gonna show you one more time. Go to cleanup, let's say I add a ton of texture just for demo purposes. Okay, go back to tone, turn that one back on, and hit reprocess. And there you go, now I bring the texture from above, and I still keep all my tone settings. On top of that, I can go to medium tan right now on my presets, and swap out. Well, I didn't quite save it right, obviously, <laughs> but you can see you can toggle between presets back and forth, find the one that you like, and at any moment, go back and change skin cleanup and reprocess. Flexibility on the layer stack is the hallmark of SKN and what we worked with from the very beginning. And that's just one example. Playing around with everything is going to take you a little time, but once you really get your head around it, you'll you'll be able to accomplish anything with tone. And like I said, it doesn't even matter if you use the SKN cleanup function before it. You can do whatever you want. When you do use the SKN cleanup function, when you have the flexibility of reprocessing your cleanup function if you decide to change your mind after you start toning.